Hi guys, I'm back with another lecture on macroeconomics and in this lecture we'll be covering the multiplier analysis or the multiplier effect. So before we start, just a brief introduction about myself. So I'm Sandhya Rao, working as an assistant professor at St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. So let's start with the lecture and this is the last topic of the second unit and uh, after this we'll be done with the second unit. So in the last lecture, we have done the uh, ADAS uh, income determination model, which was given by uh, John Maynard Keynes. In this uh, multiplier analysis also, we're going to talk about that. So uh, there were two theories of multiplier, which were given by different, different uh, economists. So the first one was given by F.A. Khan, and uh, he tried to establish a relationship between investment and employment. And the other one, which was given by John Maynard Keynes, tries to establish a relationship between the investment and income. So here we'll be talking about the one which was given by John Maynard Keynes and not by the F.A. Khan. So uh, before I start with the lecture, I want you to see a video which will make it more clear to what multiplier is. A multiplier attempts to measure the effect of aggregate spending over time. The multiplier comes from Keynesian theory, which suggests an increase in spending leads to an increase in income and consumption, exceeding the initial spending increase. The premise here is that money spent by a government or business multiplies in an economy. Suppose a state government builds a new school with a $100 million budget. Building the school requires hiring several companies, including a construction firm, to coordinate the project for $50 million. The construction firm spends 70% of its fee and saves 30%. Those numbers represent the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save. To find the multiplier, divide 1 by the marginal propensity to save. In this case, the multiplier is 3.33. The construction firm works with companies that hang drywall and pour cement, as well as painters, electricians, and so on. The construction firm pays these vendors, who in turn spend some of their income on materials, tools, food, and other necessities. The cycle continues with additional vendors. All right, so I guess the video was self-explanatory and what they were trying to say is that, you know, when we increase the investment, there's an increase in the level of income. So here we are trying to establish a relationship between the investment and income, which means that when we increase our investment, what's the level of increase in the income? Okay, so that's what multiplier analysis is all about. So if I uh, start with, I would like to give you the derivation or how we have derived this function of multiplier. So we say that income is a function or you can say the aggregate demand is a function of C plus I, which is consumption plus investment. Now, if there's a change in income, there will be a change in the consumption and a change in investment also. Now, we all know that, you know, we have kept the income constant. We do not increase the investment directly with a change in income. Okay. We have already done that in the previous lectures. So here also C, which is the consumption function, is given by the autonomous consumption function plus marginal propensity to consume multiplied by the level of income. So if you could see here, it's given. Now, if there's a change in income and there's a change in consumption, now that will only be represented by a change in this portion because this C dash is autonomous, which means it does not change with the level of income. So if the consumption is increasing or decreasing, it will only happen with respect to this portion. Okay. So this is the variable component of the consumption function. So that is why I have written here only C small c multiplied by y, which is the changing component. I have not written this C dash because this is autonomous. It will not change. So here the new uh, equation can be reframed as change in income equals to change in marginal propensity to consume multiplied by the level of income plus change in investment. 
now i have uh, taken y delta y common so here uh, my equation have been reframed in this way 1 minus c multiplied by delta y equals to change in i now i can reframe it again so delta y equals to delta i upon 1 minus c now 1 minus c is nothing but marginal propensity to save and this change in income divided by change in investment is my k which is the multiplier which tries to establish a relationship between income and investment so we are trying to say that if there is a unit change unitary change in the in, in the investment then what is the quantum of change in the level of income that is multiplier effect and we assume that you know whenever we are trying to increase the uh, investment whenever we are increasing more or, or let's say whenever we are saving less then the multiplier will be much higher okay so the effect of multiplier will be multifolded so they are trying to say that when you consume more and save less there is an addition to the national income we have already done this in the uh, income uh, determination model as well when i told you that you know when the investment level is more than the savings in that case it represents that you know this consumption is more and when the consumption is more the producers are induced to produce more because there is excess of demand in the economy and that is why people are consuming more and with that there will be an increase in the national output and subsequently the national income will also increase but in case of a reverse situation when there is uh, excess of savings and you know the in the savings curve is above the investment curve which means your savings are more than the consumption in that scenario what will happen is that uh, there will be less demand for the goods and the producers will be discouraged to produce more so there will be less of output and ultimately the income will also reduce so this ratio represents that you know uh, if the value of this denominator is less then the multiplier value will be huge okay so if 1 minus c is s okay i can reframe it as 1 upon small s so because 1 minus c is equal to s marginal propensity to consume plus marginal propensity to save is equal to 1 okay now if the value of s is small is uh, or let's say it's less than 1 in that case the value of multiplier will be greater or huge and if the value of savings is you know let's say if it's increasing agar wo zyada hai as compared to the consumption in that case the level of uh, multiplier will be less let's um, move ahead so the assumptions of this multiplier analysis is that you know npc is constant we are not changing it and net increase in investment there is a net increase in investment also there is no time lag between the increase in investment and in effect of multiplier on the income we assume that you know the effect is happening instantly bahut jaldi se jo hai wo uska effect nazar aa raha hai agar aap apni investment ko increase kar rahe ho you can see instant effect on the level of income also we feel that you know there is excess of capacity which means ki jab bhi agar demand badhti hai to hum usko pura kar sakte hain we can increase our production as and when the demand increases so we uh, we have assumed that there is no limitation hamari production capacity ki koi limitation nahi we can produce as much as we want so this is our assumption now moving ahead if you could see this diagram now here when the income increases from y1 to y2 or let's let's uh, begin from here so this is this uh, first green line represents the consumption curve okay and this second green line represents the ad curve aggregate demand curve all right now we see that there is an increase in the aggregate demand okay if you could see this orange line orange curve this is nothing but the new ad curve which is uh, because of the increase in investment hamari jo investment hai wo increase hui hai net increase hua hai investment mein jiski wajah se hamara jo ye ad curve hai it has shifted on the upper side theek hai shift kar gaya hai wo outward and this increase this increase represents nothing but the change in investment and this is net change in investment now corresponding to this increase in investment there is a multi folded increase in the level of income you can see here ye jo difference hai aapki green line aur orange line ke beech mein 
ये थोड़ा डिफरेंस है बट ये जो दो ब्लैक लाइन के बीच में जो डिस्टेंस आ रहा है दिस इज ह्यूज ओके दिस इज ग्रेटर देन दिस डिफरेंस सो वी कैन से दैट यू नो द चेंज इन इनकम इज मोर देन द चेंज इन इन्वेस्टमेंट ओके आपका जो चेंज इन इन्वेस्टमेंट है ये जो डिनोमिनेटर है दिस इज स्मॉलर देन दूमरेटर ओके सो वी कैन से दैट चेंज इन इन्वेस्टमेंट इज स्मॉलर देन द चेंज इन इनकम and the reason behind this is we all know that you know multiplier effect hai this is what we call the multiplier effect which means that you know agar aapki savings jo hai wo kam hai and your aggregate demand is increasing and aggregate demand kab badhega jab aapki investment mein increase hoga or there is an increase in the consumption so dono hi cheezon cases mein agar aapki aggregate demand jo hai wo badh rahi hai it represents a positive thing for the income all right so this is what is known as the multiplier effect so let's uh, do an example on this so if the mpc which is the marginal propensity to consume is 0.9 what is the value of multiplier and how much investment is needed to increase the national income by 5000 crores okay so in this case we are given the mpc mpc is represented by the small c okay so this small c is nothing but the mpc small c is equal to mpc now i have written the formula here that you know uh, the value of multiplier which is represented by k is equal to change in level of income upon change in investment which is 1 upon 1 minus c okay which can also be written as 1 upon 1 minus c now class अगर मुझे एम पी सी से अगर मुझे इस केस में एम पी एस निकालना हो विच मीन्स आई वॉन्ट टू फाइंड दैल्यू ऑफ मार्जिनल प्रोपेंसरी टू सेविंग्स देन वॉट विल बी दॉर्मूला हियर सी जीरो पॉइंट नाइन इज एम पी सी एंड वी ऑल नो दैट वन इज इक्वल टू एम पी सी प्लस एम पी एस सो इफ माई एम पी सी इज जीरो पॉइंट नाइन वॉट विल बी माई एम पी एस माई एम पी एस विल बी जीरो पॉइंट वन सो इफ this is 0.9 my mps will be 0.1 mps ko hum small s se bhi denote kar sakte hain so here in this case s will be equal to 0.1 okay so the value of multiplier which is k is equal to 1 upon 1 minus c so 1 upon 1 minus 0.9 gives me 1 upon 0.1 and आप जब वन अपॉन वन जीरो पॉइंट वन करोगे तो यू विल गेट अ वैल्यू ऑफ टेन विच मीन्स दैट द लेवल और द इफेक्ट ऑफ यू नो मल्टीप्लायर इज टेन टाइम्स विच मीन्स कि अगर आप अपनी एक यूनिट से इन्वेस्टमेंट को इंक्रीज करते हो द इनकम विल इंक्रीज बाय टेन टाइम्स सो यू सी वॉट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ मल्टीप्लायर हो कितना ज्यादा ह्यूज इम्पैक्ट पड़ रहा है आपकी इन्वेस्टमेंट इंक्रीज होने की वजह से आपकी इनकम पे कितना ज्यादा इफेक्ट पड़ रहा है टेन टाइम्स दैट्यूज चेंज इन दिल ऑफ इनकम टेन टाइम्स सो माई मल्टीप्लायर वैल्यू इज टेन नाउ आई कैन पुट इट इन दी अनदर इक्वेशन ठीक है दोबारा से हम उसको रिफ्रेम कर देते हैं द वैल्यू ऑफ मल्टीप्लायर इज इक्वल टू चेंज इन इनकम डिवाइडेड बाई चेंज इन इन्वेस्टमेंट नाउ योर द वैल्यू ऑफ मल्टीप्लायर विच इज के इज टेन नाउ इन क्वेश्चन अब हम दोबारा पढ़ते हैं how much investment is needed to increase the national income by 5000 crores so what he is asking you ki aapki investment kitni honi chahiye if you want to increase your income by 5000 crore to agar aapki income 5000 crore se increase ho rahi hai that means that there is a change in income worth rupees 5000 crores so he is asking you about the change in investment so let's uh, let's just put the values in the equation so aapka change in income jo hai wo 5000 hai so i have written it here divided by the change in investment so i'll uh, bring it here the uh, lhs side pe hum usko lekar aa jayenge left hand side pe so change in i which is delta i will be equal to 5000 and this 10 will come on the right side divided by 10 so 5000 divided by 10 gives you 500 crores so this means that you know अगर आपकी इन्वेस्टमेंट जो है वो 500 करोड़ से चेंज हो रही है तो अगर आप अपना मल्टीप्लायर लगाते हो विच गिव्स यू 10 टाइम्स बेनिफिट इन द इनकम तो आप इसको ऐसे क्रॉस चेक भी कर सकते हो क्रॉस वेरीफाई भी कर सकते हो 
the income will come 5000 only because 500 into 10 gives you 5000 so this means ki jo bhi aapka jitna bhi change aa raha hai investment mein usko agar aap apne multiplier se multiply kar doge then you will get the change in income so we have already done it hame already given thi ki income mein change kitna aaya hai and we have verified it here also so this is how it works so this shows ki agar aap apni marginal propensity to consume ko badhate ho to aapka definitely uh, jo income hai wo kafi increase hoga now let's just reframe it uh, guys uh, if I take the same example, in that case, I'm taking my, my marginal propensity to consume as, let's say, um, 0 0.8. Okay, 0 0.8 le le te, marginal propensity to consume. Ko. So here now, NPC is 0 0.8. Ab kya hua? Meri jo marginal propensity to consume hai, wo kam ho gai hai. Earlier it was 0 0.9, now it has come to 0 0.8. Alright, so my new multiplier will be what? K is equal to 1 upon... 1 minus 0 0.8 now 0 0.1 minus 0 0.8 means 1 upon 0 0.2 so here it means that the value of multiplier is only 5 so you see ki thoda sa maine mpc ko change kiya aur mera multiplier kitna zyada kam ho gaya hai from 10 to 5 there's a 50% reduction in the level of multiplier so, now my income will increase hogi only by 5 times. So, let's, let's just do it in the same example. If my income is 5,000 crores, se increase hoti, so let's see what will be my investment. Alright, so let's just do it here. So, my multiplier is 5 divided by um, is equal to 5,000 divided by the change in income. So here, my change in income will be, sorry, my change in investment will be 5,000 upon 5, which gives me 1,000 as my investment. So this means that if my investment is 1,000, then my income is 5,000. So if my income is increased in the income, mein, and in the case, mein, when my NPC was more, in that case, my uh, income was increasing by 10 times. So you see the effect of uh, multiplier here. So your multiplier depends on depend karta hai on your marginal propensity to consume or you can say your marginal propensity to savings. Jitni zyada marginal propensity to consume high hoga, utna hi zyada aapka multiplier ka value hoga. And the lesser the value of marginal propensity to savings, the better it is for the multiplier. Okay, the income will increase multifolded or many folded times. So you see the difference here. Chaise hi meri marginal propensity to savings jo thi, wo pehle 0 0.1 thi, ab 0 0.2 hui, which means meri savings jo hai, wo bad gai hai. So meri income jo hai, wo kam increase ho rahi And if my marginal propensity to say consume uh, marginal propensity to consumption is increasing, then my investment or uh, then my income is also increasing. So this is all about the multiplier analysis. And uh, this is the question that you're going to do. So in an economy, the equilibrium level of income is let's say 12,000 crores and the ratio of marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to savings is 3 is to 1. Now you have to calculate the additional investment needed to reach a new equilibrium level of income of 20,000 crores. Now here guys, it's not given to us that you know what's the exact value of marginal propensity to consume or savings. We are given a ratio here. So what we are going to do here is, we'll take the ratio figures. So let's say, um, let, let, let's just assume that the value of marginal propensity to consume is 3x and the value of marginal propensity to savings is x. And we all know that, you know, the income is equal to C plus I. Okay, we all, let's just make it Y. This is income. Okay. And this is uh, C plus I. Also, we all know that C, which is the marginal propensity to consume, and S small s represents the marginal propensity to save is equal to 1. So 3x plus x is equal to 
1, which means 4x is equal to 1. So we'll get the value of x as 0 0.25. So that is how you're going to do the questions now. So this x represented your marginal propensity to savings. Now you have got the exact values and you can put it in the formula now. Okay, so this was just a small hint that I wanted to give you so that it will be easy for you to do the question. So this is it guys. This is the end of unit 2 and uh, we'll be starting with the unit 3 in the subsequent lectures. Alright guys, thank you.